He says, now, you know, I could go back to preaching again. And she's like, no, in fighting, at least the people whose brains you hurt volunteer for it, right? They know yeah, what they're no, getting into. Better. So yeah. Interesting that he's like, sorry, I can't do a job with skills anymore, but I can do preaching. I've, I've preaching requires <laughs> literally nothing. Yeah. The ultimate safety school job. Yeah, It's either preaching or I go to Eli and Heath's middle school once a year and freak out all the kids about drunk driving. Oh, yeah. And as an adult, you think about that speaker and you're like, what the fuck was the point of that? Yeah. That doesn't seem... God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or they'll send us back to the science lab. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, No. It's time for some wrist control. Very excited. <laughs> Damn sure is. <laughs> Actually, that's against the rules in MMA that you're not allowed to use small joint manipulation, but that's fine. That's fine. We'll, we'll push past that. Got to control the wrist, though. It's all you got. It's, <laughs> wrist, it's, all, about, it's all about wrists. And of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Kumate, kumate, nope. kumate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that movie. <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? This is the blood of Christ sport. We watched. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. We watched Fighting Chance. It's the blood of Christ sport. Just thought of that. Very excited. <laughs> it's the story of a Christian MMA fighter and what happens when. Apparently, God is suffering from CTE and traumatic brain injury and still <laughs> no. controls everything. Oh, that would explain a lot. Yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the feel good one time I got better thanks to doctor stories we're used to from Christian cinema, but you wish God was as irrelevant as he is powerful... You will love this movie. Uh, this is Million Dollar Maybe, everybody. Okay. Million Dollar Maybe. Uh, well yeah. done. Well done. <laughs> I mean, he he fucking overshadowed you with his Blood of Christ sport thing at the beginning. But that's fine. Yeah, you did, yours you was know, good, too, though. I'm uh, salarying in the corner. Yeah. Like, <laughs> as though his puns were from God. <laughs> Eucharist control. There we go. That, oh, that one there fits you go. Nice. nice. Yeah. Right. It's a good thing he doesn't drink. Otherwise, we might fall down that path. <laughs> <laughs> So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. The movie ran out of the movie and had to write a different movie. Mm -hmm. They made a mixed martial arts movie, a karate movie, and then they ran out of karate and they had to write something sad and different from karate for the rest of the movie because they only had like a tiny amount of karate moves, as it turned out. They thought they had a movie. Work. Right, right. They could only do three karates and then they had to yeah, move up. It's the yeah. best. It's the worst. All right. So I'm just going to go with best worst fucking title. Okay. The movie is called Fighting Chance because the main character's name is Chance. Huh? And he's huh? fighting. And he's a fighter. Fighting. In the movie, it's so fucking dumb. Chance. I mean, we've watched like 113 movies where the lead female character's name is Faith. Yeah. Or Hope. Yeah, right. right. And this is still fucking stupid. Yeah. Also, it's about God. You don't have a fighting chance. You have whatever God wants. You have that. That's yeah, what you right. have. Mm -hmm. Fair. Absolutely. I also, it's like, I just have to point out, because it kept bothering me so much. Like, did this feel to you guys like a short film that overstayed its welcome, <laughs> right? <laughs> like sometimes people will suggest movies and they're only like five or 10 minutes long. And I'm like, ah, you know, maybe we'll save it for a mini. Like it's just not quite right for God awful movies. Yeah. That's how I feel about this 70 minute long movie. Is that quite, not quite enough there? Okay, a bunch <laughs> of times during the 70 minutes, I was like, all right, that's all for me, I guess. Yeah. You're going to take off then, movie? <laughs> <laughs> There's, this movie is 75. Th so, somehow this is like the triple spaced big margins version of a 75 minute movie. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst suicide attempt. Now, listen, okay. podcast listener, we're aware here about the seriousness of suicide on God awful movies. Are we, though? We are. We are. And we're, we're woke. Okay. And we're good people. And I challenge you to find the goodest, the most 
goodest person in your life and ask them to take this suicide scene seriously. <laughs> it makes Jim Carrey's The Pen is Blue moment from Liar Liar <laughs> look like the ending credits of Remains of the Day. It is the silliest. I, we'll get to it. We'll yep. get to it when we get to it. It was like the noose is blue. It was a very funny <laughs> slapstick <laughs> suicide attempt. There's no moment you could tell. We'll talk about it. We'll, I laughed you, a it's lot impossible. during that a scene. A lot, right? A lot. No, I, yeah, I did too. I felt bad about it, but I did. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There is remarkably little movie to talk about this week, so we're going to pad the runtime with an ad and a sketch, but we'll be back in a moment with all the dispassionately uttered cliches that are Fighting Chance. In a world of inflated inflation. That'll be $145, sir. But all I bought was eggs. One cell phone will have the courage, the gall, the downright cojones to charge just $15 a month for cell phone service. Darn it, Corporal. How are they doing it? Sir, as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Look out! All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. Oh, Brick, you really do care. I care as much as I've saved with Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get that plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. A helicopter! <laughs> no, Wendy, that's a savings copter. Oh, Brick, you're my hero! All right, everybody, thanks for coming over. Even though I know some of you are only here for the beer and pizza, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you got me that. Got me that. Yeah, yeah. I do like those things. Uh, so so you, you've all had a chance to read the inspiring script that I wrote for my movie Fighting Chance. I'd just like to ask what you guys think. I mean, dude, it's such a powerful story. Yeah. yeah. Like, this guy is amazing. He really uh, is. Amazing. Yeah. He really is. Yeah, so, like, where did you meet this guy? Uh, where did I meet what guy? The, the guy the the movie's based on. Where'd you meet him? Oh, no, uh, it's it's not based on anybody. Oh, you just, you just made this story up? Mm -hmm. Made up straight off the dome. Oh, so you wrote, like, Bad Luck Rocky? You just made it up? Yeah, like when this was based on a true story, I wasn't going to say anything, but but this is just like all the Rocky movies, but with worse luck. Worse luck, exactly. Yeah, thank you. No, no, it isn't. It's about, you know, redemption and healing. I mean, it's about traumatic brain injury. Rocky. Rocky with that. Right. Look, look, guys, this movie also has like a, a super important Christian message, okay? It's about how God is there e even in your darkest times. Okay, but God doesn't do anything in the movie. The, the guy just gets better, and then he, like, kind of thanks God for that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, are you sure you don't want to just lie and say it's based on a true story? Hey, why does it matter if it's a true story or not? You guys keep bringing that up. Well, I mean, true stories are... Allowed to be kind of lame? Allowed to be lame, exactly. Oh. All right, well, I guess I'll look into it. Nice. Did you just order two pizzas? Dude, there's three of us. I'm just saying. That's, just get a little more pizza. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open with the warning that, quote, this film might not be suitable for younger viewers, end quote. And I feel like that ignores... Older viewers. <laughs> it's, just, it's not suitable for us either. All the amounts. Yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on the logos, but I do want to point out that this movie was made by Future Movie Productions. And I wrote in my notes, ah, lazy alien naming visits us once again. Right, right. And of course, we also saw that beautiful, wonderful Bridgestone logo. You're always in for a good time. Every time. Can we 
talk to them sometime. Not, not for a full episode, but I just want to, because I assume they're sane, right? And they're just mm. like making money off Christians. But I would like to talk to their office to be like, so how are your days? Good? Are they, would you say that they're good? Do you ever have you anyone refuse night, you... to take a credit card because it's the devil number? Yeah, multiple times. <laughs> You've had that happen multiple times. So, yeah, so we start the movie off 29 years ago with a baby desperately being prematurely born, right? Yeah. Okay. Did this feel like the Jesus Christ of MMA was being born the way this episode? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was like, they give us this thing and it's clearly about fighting. And then it's like 29 years earlier and it's a baby happening. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is interesting. It's like the yeah. Neo of this. But Are we yeah, in a no. manger here? No. Okay. No, it's a hospital. If I can spoil how poor this filmmaking is, okay, the reason we have this scene is later in the movie, about 50 minutes from now, the mom is going to say, you were born prematurely and they said you wouldn't make it. That's why I named you Chance. And apparently their test audiences were like, I didn't see no baby being born. This movie don't make no sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, either that or they got to the end of it and they're like, 73 and a half minutes. I feel like we can pad this a little. What if, what if we see him being born at the beginning, huh? <laughs> Remember the mom mentions that? What if it's long? What if it's a C-section also? Like they try to do the regular <laughs> and then they have to switch and they argue about the epidural. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they scrape out 73 eventually. Yeah. They do. The lady says to the doctor, please save my baby. She says this to the doctor, not Jesus, <laughs> by the way. I like that the doctor's like, oh, okay, cool. Save the baby. Got it. Got it. Guys, guys, <laughs> everybody gather, gather around. Uh, yeah, Dave, who Change has just plan. popcorn. Dave, you're just eating popcorn and Logan. You <laughs> yeah. need to try to help now as a doctor. We're actually save saving this, this one, guys, baby. for a change. You didn't hear yeah. her? Yeah, she said save. <laughs> no, it wasn't until wasn't until a lady told us to save the baby that we started trying to save. We've actually just been fucking around down here, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for the Normally direction. we feel bad about meddling with God's plan, but like I feel like you're Christian right, and you're saying it's right. Yeah. This one time? Okay, we're on it. <laughs> so, yeah, and by the way, that's the level of writing that this movie is going to achieve over and over again. People will literally say phrases like, please save my baby over and over again. I almost went with best, worst cliche dialogue. All right, so we cut to the present day. We see this guy jogging, and we're going to get a bunch of the exposition and sort of like voiceover at this point. Mm hmm Which is weird because like, this is usually the part of the movie where you get to, you know, see those scenes. But apparently this film, and again, we, we talked about it a bit at the beginning. This film is like, no, 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 we need to see him in several physical therapy montages. We don't have time for the stakes of the movie or <laughs> who the characters are or why we should care about them. <laughs> yeah. No, we see him jogging and we, we overhear his doctor saying, you know, you've had several concussions and while your MRI looks good, another big hit to the head, it could do some some serious damage. And to his credit, chances like that is universally true about big hits to the head, though. That's true. That's you, shouldn't always just, you just generally shouldn't kicks. get hit in the head. Right, but the doctor is clearing him to fight in MMA professional fight. This doctor needs to go to jail. <laughs> right, like, honestly, yeah. You've had a whole bunch of concussions, head trauma, but no, you're good. You're, you're good to go do that again. No, that needs to be a law. Sure. Well, counterpoint, if I can raise an inquiry, if I can be brave as I am bold, what does a doctor who says you're okay to fight in an MMA match say? <laughs> yeah. Like, what is, does that guy go like, well, it's not good for you. <laughs> right, yeah. But yeah. you seem okay now. So... <laughs> I think his word needs to be higher than okay for it to be legal to clear <laughs> sure. somebody to fight professionally. Sure. Yeah. Well, and we also overhear the wife, this is Ashley, saying like, well, maybe, you know, you should just not be an MMA fighter instead. And he's like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you, Ashley. So, <laughs> so, it, it, so, but that's the end of the voiceover. We watch him jog for a little while and he's the champ. We know because seven people have gathered with lawn chairs to watch him jog <laughs> And hold up little signs that say you're the champ as he runs by. Rough. The jog watching party that they have. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, to be clear, he's not like the champ of the UFC. He's nope. like gonna fight in a local 
promotion in a second. It's so silly. No, he's the assistant to the regional chief. Yeah. <laughs> UFC, <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> At best. One of the signs also says Just John 316. Oh, nice. Which is great. Nice. The movie, the movie was like, hey, uh, Noah, Heath, Eli, counts. There yep, you have to are. do us. Yeah. Yep. No, it's like George Lucas inserted Christianity into this movie after the fact <laughs> to be like, all right, there you go. Now you get to be on a podcast at least. Sorry. <laughs> So, okay, so now we're going to cut to his big MMA match. And I love, we see everybody walking into the match and they're really spacing out those same seven people. Sorry, everybody? Well, there's like seven people. Yeah. They're like coming back around <laughs> in mustaches. It's the, it's, the same, it's the same jog watching. Party. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. People. But we have to talk about the excuse the movie makes for this because this is the hardest I laughed in the mm -hmm. entire movie. Mm -hmm. As the announcers are talking, they're like, and of course, we have to... Reduce capacity because of COVID. Fucking yes. Bill Gates. Yeah. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's why there's only eight people here for this right. championship MMA battle. They put up a poster every night at church and nobody came and they were like, we... <laughs> We should say it's for COVID. And it's like, yes, that's true. We did only allow eight people per sporting event at COVID. Yeah. Oh, it's, well, it's a clever excuse, but then shouldn't people be wearing masks or something? Like, I Now I want you to all die of concussions is the problem. Okay, statistically, like four of the people we just saw are dead from COVID, but right? That's yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. No, so, but yeah, so the announcers are telling us about the fight. And for some reason, they're introducing the fighters based on their dad's jobs, <laughs> right? Like this yeah. was fucking mm -hmm. feudal <laughs> England or something. They're like a humble preacher's son versus the son of a wealthy farmer. <laughs> Sorry, but also they got the evil rich character trope so badly wrong. Yes. Here. Like the evil rich character. It's supposed to be like the James Spader is from big farm money though. Yeah. Yep out in the middle of nowhere, then we see this family and it's not like they own like all the corn in Iowa. It's like they have like five acres of farm and they have a bunch of money. Yes, they, have a, they have a lovely family farm that they've worked very hard on. Yeah, right. So they're talking about how like, I guess this is like, again, this is the assistant to the regional MMA organization, but the winner of this fight will get a contract to fight with the GFF, the Global Fighting Federation. Which is yeah. a big fucking deal, apparently. Felt like they were setting up a fucking Left Behind movie just in case. They were like, and, and you know what? We could put a Russian guy in charge of that in case this one's not popular. <laughs> yeah, I was right. just hoping they would fight over GIF versus GIF as the way to say that. <laughs> 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 nice. Yep. They don't. So. Yeah, okay. So then we cut back to the locker room where Chance is getting ready for his big bout. And again, everything in this fucking movie, every line is a stupid cliche. The trainer turns to him and he gives him an 11 word pep talk. This is it in its entirety. Leave it all in the cage tonight. No regrets. No regrets. Okay. I will say I have literally never heard that expression used non-ironically in my life right. until this moment, <laughs> until watching this movie. No. Yeah. That's like YOLO. Like you're done. Whatever mm, yeah. is about to happen. It's bad. Yep. But yeah, so the trainer's all excited. Ashley is worried, though, that his brain will explode from all the concussions, right? So she's like, hey, let's discuss the stakes of the film for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love he, his counter to her is he's like, look, there's no guarantees in life, babe. I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, yeah, but it's not like you'd advertise getting hit by a bus. tomorrow. You are going to be hit by a, there's a bus-based purse tonight. Right. Yes. It's a very volunteer thing. And the thing is, is if you were about to get hit by a bus, you'd avoid it. Right. That's, <laughs> that's Ashley's point. I should also point out, this is when we learned that Ashley's pregnant, right? So she, he's, he's got a kid on the way too. I like the uh, slogan for his fighting team that's on his sweatshirt and <laughs> yes. his trainer's sweatshirt. It says, lions, not sheep. Mm -hmm. Which is we, like, okay, lions, whatever, that's a fighting animal, but like, <laughs> decidedly not sheep. Like, they have to list, oh, uh, and nor tigers, nor bears, also. <laughs> like, well, yes. tigers and bears would also be kind of cool. We've that's chosen pretty, pretty lions badass, over those. Still, like, this sweatshirt's getting long. He's a Christian. We'll cut it there. <laughs> John 316. There's also this amazing, like, unintentionally humorous moment. Where she's like, maybe you could find another job. And he's like, I don't want to be a preacher anymore. No offense, dad. And they turn and dad's in the fucking room all of a sudden. Scared the shit out of yes. <laughs> Like dad, dad might as well like rise up out of the floor magically right next to him. It's so silly. 
I wanted him to turn to like a dusty orphan. And you, little Timmy, if I win tonight, I'll be able to build you that orphanage after you burn down. Yeah. And then the traitor cuts in and he's like, Ashley, don't worry. He's going to be fine. I'm sure him not being fine is not the plot of this movie. And she's like, I feel like it is, though. Okay. We need to talk about their actual dialogue because it's the funniest words anyone has ever written. (laughs) He says he's going to be fine. None of my fighters have ever gotten hurt. (laughs) She says one time his eye popped out and he says, yeah, well, what are you going to (laughs) do? Seriously, she's like concussions and retinal detachment don't count Mm -hmm. as seriously injured. And he's like, they do. No, (laughs) no. What? Let's see. You got come on. That's not. That's fixable. Are you familiar with code names, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> the doctor said he's okay to fight. What could possibly happen? There you go. <laughs> and then she says, and I quote: "I don't care if we're rich or poor, babe. All I ever wanted is you." I would have scrawled that out and started over if I was writing a fucking love note in middle school. Yeah, Jesus. if I was writing a greeting <laughs> card for the emotionally stunted, I think I would have tossed that one away. <laughs> oh, and this is where dad, who's like super Christian, I think also a preacher, right? Son's kind of like following in the footsteps. Yeah. Dad's like, it's going to be fine. God obviously loves us. And, you know, hopefully uh, the other guy in the fight's like Jewish or atheist or something. And we're going to be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote that yes. down as like an exaggeration of what he was saying. And then he literally did almost that exact yes. prayer, except without the like actual word Jewish. Yep. Yeah. And then we, we go over to the other locker room. In, in contrast to the prayer, we see the bad guy fighter getting his secular prayerless heathen pep talk. <laughs> okay. I have to talk about the last thing that happens in this scene because I need to be emotionally coached through surviving it. The last moment of this scene is he goes, where are my headphones? Where are my headphones? And his girlfriend's like, here are your headphones. And that is the end of the scene and no one ever explains it. We never it. go what back the to fuck headphones. Is happening? There's nothing there. Yeah. I love too that we see his parents in this one, like his mo- his rich farmer mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> With their <laughs> cowboy hats. Their corn money and their fancy bolo ties because they're rich. <laughs> oh, such a weird moment. I wanted the the headphone thing to go on a little longer and like, oh, I can't pair the Bluetooth. Babe, babe, how do you pair it? How do you pair it? <laughs> juice. This is fucking ridiculous. I need a different phone. What juice? But- <laughs> <laughs> Just sucking an applesauce pouch as they take him out onto the yeah, ring. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the writer, by the way. The guy who plays Max, the evil bad guy fighter. Oh, really? He's also the yeah. co-writer of the movie. Oh, yeah, he has the head structure of someone who wrote this movie. Yes, I believe that. that. Sure does. <laughs> Got to have a strong chin if you're going to write this movie. Absolutely. That's important. He was a professional anvil before her writing this film, but then he thought, he's okay to anvil again. He'll be fine. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, then, so we cut back over to Chance's locker room, and he needs a quick minute alone with Ashley so that he can give her his Jesus necklace symbolically and tell the third act or something. Right. How awesome would it be, though, if like the minute everyone else had left, he had been like, Ashley, you have to hide me. I don't know how to punch. This fly has gotten way out of control. As <laughs> soon as he takes the necklace off, he just falls over onto the stool like million dollar pay. His head rolls <laughs> off. <Yeah. laughs> well, that's what I, I wrote in my notes. Like, wait, did, does he get the shit beat out of him because he didn't have the necklace on? Because that'd be awesome. But OK, so then we, we cut to the announcers getting ready. <laughs> And the first, the bad guy comes out. This is Max is the guy he's fighting. And they just, they're just like, yeah, this is Max. He's the antagonist. Uh, he, everybody hates him. You can hear the eight people in the crowd booing. <laughs> Real quote, Max has a good right, but he has a good left. And I wrote in my notes, maybe go see a single mixed martial arts <laughs> fight before you make a movie about him. <laughs> Arms. Nah, they both. Stupid. So a lot okay. of a lot of the fighting's gonna take place on the near side of us. Yeah, right. I love that the podcast guys here, the announcer guys, are screaming at each other. They're trying to do that, like, you know, stupid Joe Rogan is excited before the match thing, and like there's a huge crowd behind us being, but there's nobody behind them. And right. Like seven people, no noise. <laughs> and they're screaming and all excited. And then one guy walks out and just like, woo. Okay. <laughs> so- <laughs> all right. And I hate to bring the tone down because we know him. So this is this is painful for us to say, but the oh gosh, this is hard. The let's get ready to rumble guy is 
Matt Dillahunty. And I think we should just get it out right now. I don't know what Matt was. Maybe Matt was short on cash. I know that he's been going through it. But, you know, Matt, we forgive you for being the announcer in this film. And I just feel like everyone should know it's Matt Dillahunty. Yeah, yeah. No, he comes out and he's like, yeah, no, I want a good, clean fight. No eye gouging. No small joint manipulation. No inciting incidents. We're going to I went over this with you guys at the beginning. Yeah, and the Bruce Buffer guy also names the jobs of the parents as part of the he intro. Does, yeah. He's like, in this corner, uh, somebody whose parents are, uh, well, one is uh, with Kaiser Permanente. Uh, it's not <laughs> a flashy job. Yeah, and, but he names the the rich farmers again, too. I don't know why they're so focused on this, but right, they because are. Because it, it never comes into the plot. It never matters what this guy's parents' job are. We, we need to know they're rich later. Like, that kind of matters, but that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and of course, they don't touch gloves because they hate each other. It's, they're, they're angry. Ooh. Yeah. Also, Matt Delahunty tries to start the match by saying... Prepare for war. And I, I wanted someone to be like, hey, hey, Craig, you don't just get to make up like sayings for <laughs> mixed martial. <laughs> this is very clearly not war. It's a sport, man. <laughs> Weird. You know, there's a war happening right now, Craig. It's yeah. very insensitive. Off putting. So, okay. <laughs> You're Matt Dillahunty. All right. So, so the fight starts. We get fucking 18 seconds of dancing before the First punch is thrown, which is like how MMA fights a lot of times begin. But like, we don't need to see that in the stupid fucking movie, right? Yeah. So we establish very early on that the bad guy is the better stand-up fighter, Max, and the good guy, Chance, is the better grappler. So he wants to get the fight on the ground, but the bad guy won't let him. Yeah. Also, I know people are a little sensitive about this because they they, they love the grabbing and the and the twisting. Is it always? So erotic, or is it just me? Okay, it it is always very erotic, but it, it's it's made all the more erotic in this movie because they keep doing slow motion shit, right? Like like Chance gets in in full guard at one point, and they just so keep doing these slow motion pans around behind him, and I'm like, well, it looks like they're having a lovely time, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> thank you, no illusions. Finally, <laughs> also neither of these actors are particularly good at MMA. They're both like beginners but were excited at how good they were gonna be so they have to like choreograph with each other so it's a lot of like very much dance moves so mm -hmm. I think that added to the sexuality I thought they had good chemistry for yeah, a sex scene <laughs> sure. but not for a fight scene yeah this movie is very clearly their audition to be David A.R. White's stuntman <laughs> so, yeah, right. you know, <laughs> hope it works out for them can we talk about mom yelling one taunt at, at the beginning of this too yeah the mom of the good guy Chance sees bad guy Max come out and Max's nickname is Max the Mad Dog something something. Yeah. And she says, put that dog out of his misery, Chance. The good guy's mom yelled about euthanizing the bad guy. Yeah, no, they're clearly trying to do a comedy beat with mom being too violent in her taunts and stuff, but they don't go far enough and it just comes across that mom is a violent asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because we then cut over to the other parents who were like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, I'm not doing well. But like, <laughs> I will say, I absolutely sympathize with mom because if my child was a mixed martial arts fighter, not a big concern here in the Bosnian household, <laughs> I would absolutely not be okay just being like, all right, well, I guess someone's going to punch you my worst nightmare since the day you were born and I'll yeah, right. sit here hoping it goes well. <laughs> Listen, I want to see the one fight because it's going to start and end with Eli doing a flying sidekick of a child <laughs> and then going to jail for a day or two. Yeah, right, right. Oh, that's funny. Okay, Heath was picturing my child fighting another child. I thought I yeah. was just like in the stands and some kid's eating a big bug, big bag of cotton candy. And I'm like, you're distracting him, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, no, you're going into the ring for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so Chance gets uh, Max on the ground. He gets the rear naked choke, but Max gets out and then beats the fuck out of Chance to a comical degree. <laughs> he gets so punched for like five. He gets punched 1,000 times over it's, and over while we watch. The ref <laughs> not stopping this fight is essentially murder at this point. Yes. Yes. This was Peter and the chicken for so <laughs> yes. long. I laughed a lot. 
Ip Man would have crawled into the thing and been like, that's too many punches. Yeah, Can I say this is too many punches? <laughs> so here's what happened. For those of you who don't watch this scene, and you should absolutely watch this scene, what happens is they do the shot, then they do a slow motion, and then they do the reverse shot. So it ends up just being 80 seconds of like, <laughs> 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 so and then punches. the round ends, and they're both like, yep. Well, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, well, I'll tell you what, as weird as it is to stick the break in the middle of the opening fight of the movie, this movie has all the pacing of Eli trying to clap along to folk music. So we're going to pause right there, I guess, but we're back in a flash with all the happenstance that is Fighting Chance. I, I mean, how many times did we order ramen? I mean, three when I was there. Like, well, exactly. Hey, guys, what you talking about? All the food we ate at a pajama party last week, I packed on quite a few pounds. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. So you guys montaging it up? Sorry, are we what? Uh, doing a montage in your head and then and then you're back in shape again? No. Oh, I, I do it all the time. See, well, I'll do one for you now. See, back in shape. Mm-hmm. I see. But for those of us who didn't have montage powers... Oh, well, then I'd recommend FitBod. Oh, what's that's, that's too long. I'm cutting it. What? Uh, this is like the second time. Come on. I told you trying to change the game was a bad idea. What's FitBod? Come on. Really? Nope. nope. Eli gets the point. Tried to change the He's game. He's not even the one who doesn't know about the product. It doesn't make sense for him to... FitBod right. creates custom workouts based on your goals, experience, available equipment, and more. Plus, the app intelligently varies your intensity and volume and tracks muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout plan. That sounds great, but what if I don't know any workout stuff? Well, FitBot helps you learn new movements the right way with over a thousand exercise demonstration videos. It's true. I tried FitBot when they became a sponsor, and I love that they have dozens of ways to work my muscles, so I never get bored of the workouts they've created for me. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse FitBot. If you don't have montage powers. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? It's never been easier to get the results you've always wanted. Check out FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. FitBod. Because not everyone has montage powers. So Eli, can you use your montage powers to do other stuff too? <laughs> you tell me, Heath. Bon guard, mon graphine croissant. Um, you learned French with that one? C. Si. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fantastic night for a fight here at the FGG. It sure is, Nick. It sure is. All right. So what do you make of tonight's fighters? Oh, this is going to be a battle of the ages for sure. On the one hand, you've got Chance, who's got strength and speed. But on the other hand, you've got Max, who has speed and strength. One thing's for sure. Um, whoever wins tonight will be the victor. Uh, sorry, Larry, you, um, you actually didn't say anything just now. So you, uh, you want to try it again? No, I said adjectives and verbs and uh, no, all, all no, no, you did not really say anything. Kind of self-negating nonsense there. That was it. Oh, okay then, Mister Smarty Pants. Who do you think is going to win the fight? Uh, okay, well, if you have to ask, I'd say it's about the punching game. So yeah, there's that. Also, the wrestling game thing. Legs. Damn it, I don't know anything either. Come on, Larry. Surely there's something to comment on about this job. Boxing has commentators. Wrestling has commentators. We've got to have something to say. I'm afraid not, Nick. I don't. How How can you be so sure? Because the most famous person with our job is Joe Rogan. Ah, oh, fuck. You got me there, Larry. You got me there. Apparently, we're both named Larry. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the fighters in their corners preparing for round two. Yeah, Coach No Regrets starts this little pep talk by saying, we knew this wasn't going to be easy, but your cardio is better than his. And I wrote in my notes, really odd metric. Odd okay. metric. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I tired that guy out by having him punch me in the face a thousand right. times. It seemed exhausting. It did seem exhausting. I really actually got a rest because I was laying on the ground that whole time, if you think <laughs> about it. Yes. If your opponent is winded because he landed so many punches directly to your head, that's not much tit for his tat. Yeah. But they keep trying to establish that, like, 
Ch- you know, uh, Chance is the better conditioned fighter. He's the more disciplined fighter because of all of the Christianity. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, car- cardio actually really is one of the metrics, I think. But like, I don't, I don't know too well. Oh, sure. But yeah, it's heart. It's Christian heart that he has and it's cardio. Yes. My favorite part of this little sequence, though, before the round starts is Max's cut man. We go over to Max's corner for a second and his <laughs> yes. cut man has this. I don't know. I, I know a little bit about this. There's this thing called a cold iron. It's this like miniature thing that looks like an old timey iron mm-hmm. and they ice it. And the cut man, if you have like a cut or a big bruise, they press it onto the spot and it cools it down and prevents the swelling or lowers the amount of blood that goes to the area or whatever. But the actor playing the cut man had no idea. It was just like, well, this is a very small, adorable iron. So I will do an ironing motion and smooth out so Max's funny. face. So funny. Look at these wrinkles. So funny. Out of his head. It's the fucking best. I love so I, my favorite part of that sequence is Ashley, Chance's wife, just openly weeping at the chances of his death in the fucking like you know like if there was a huge crowd that would be okay she could probably get away with it but there are eight people there like one eighth of the people are openly weeping yeah if I were Max I would stop the fight and be like hey man your wife seems does she know what mixed martial arts is because it seems like she thought it was like a rock paper scissors situation and was not aware of how I mean don't get me wrong I punched you for a really long time like an eon I punched you forever and I, I would cry for any of my loved ones who got punched that many times. But like, she doesn't seem emotionally prepared for <laughs> what you do for a living. Is this her first time coming to see you at work? <laughs> we also get a little bit of vamping right before the round starts. And it's uh-huh. crazy. They told, I guess, these, you know, announcer, podcaster, radio guys to vamp about MMA a little bit. Exact words that we got. Sprawling raw, baby. They can pay no making pay. What? And they kept that. <laughs> and they were like, well, that was insane. But we'll cut it with another vamp really close and fast. And nobody will notice. And then we get the corner man who was told to vamp too. And he's like, one shot instance. Let's go. And that's the whole thing. <laughs> what? So crazy. Yeah. I, I rewound it to try to like check the actual. That's exact words. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So, yeah, so Chance's mom screams, you know, pull off his testicles and devour them with your teeth or whatever. And the, and the second round begins. Now, this time, Chance gets Max on the ground. A lot of random homoerotic slow-mo that goes on it's at so that good. point. There's this great moment because he's supposed to do this thing where he picks him up and slams him. But you have to be a pretty good athlete to fake slamming someone on a mat. So he mm. just brings him down super slow. Yes. And there's just this moment where these two, I'm sure straight men are like, you do it. Don't look at me. Don't just gently, just do it. Just gently. do it. You're making it weird. You're, you're making it weird. Just do it. Lay me upon the bed. <laughs> So, yeah, and at this point, by the way, they give up on the whole idea of like a linear fight narrative and we just descend into montage. Yeah. Right. You never really appreciate how good Rocky is until you see other people try to choreograph a sports fight and you're like, oh, yeah, it's a hard narrative to communicate. With yeah. Video. <laughs> well, and what we're seeing is each of them do their coolest moves, right? Like Chance has this Superman punch that he wants to. He's like, good, let me do the Superman punch, which, by the way, could not have been more telegraphed if it was in Morse. <laughs> He fucking go. Puts so his fist out and slow. runs across at him. Yes. It's crazy. Like old timey baseball pitcher wind up into <laughs> an extremely slow jumping, arcing ballet style spinny punt. It's so funny. Popeye would have said, dude, he's going to see that coming. He's going to come on, man. <laughs> but the second round ends. They head back to their corners. Chance's trainer is like, I think you guys are tied after two. And I'm like, really? Because. Because Max laid 12,000 punches. Does it not at the go by of, punches? Is it by dramatic tension? Is that how the scoring is yeah. done? And the parents on his side are like, yeah, pretty sure Chance is going to win this one because I guess the music slightly changed and they were like, right. yeah, he got beat the fuck up. But did you hear uh, the, you heard the music the, change, right? It's yeah, more no, like the music is now. It was minor when he was getting punched, but it's it's definitely major. It's now. major. Now. It's totally it major. Down. That's yeah. that's us. We're major team, right? Yeah. You told that guy that that our son was going to euthanize him like a dog a second ago. <laughs> I don't. It's not a hundred percent that we're the good guys, but I think we are. <laughs> No, trust me, they have a farm. They're, they're the bad guys. <laughs> but to, and, and Chance's dad is like, no, Max is spent. He's used all his energy. God is good, as in he chose our son over the other guy. 
right? Yeah. Keep that in mind, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so now even Ashley is starting to believe she's no longer openly weeping right next to the ring. She thinks he can win now. Yeah. So while they're recovering, we cut back to the ringside announcers for some more of their awesome commentary. Now, this is where I first realized that the red-haired guy, he's a real ringside announcer who's done this before. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, like, fake T.J. Miller guy? Yeah. He's, like, a real MMA announcer? <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, like, I don't know, real. Like, he's, he's announced some fights in a fucking Harbor Freight parking lot at some point he's or whatever. He's heard but, of mixed martial arts. Yeah. Okay, so have I. So, like, I am. Yeah. Like, I'm a real right. podcaster. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. He's a real podcaster. The other guy is the director's cousin, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, it, we keep cutting to the red-haired guy, and he'll have something, like, vaguely sportsy to say, and the other guy will be like, I also am, now will talk about Yes, words. and what he says <laughs> is, yeah, whoever wins tonight wins <laughs> tonight. <laughs> he says, whoever wins tonight will be the victor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they wrote that down mm-hmm. and shot it. It's a movie. It's not you get multiple takes. All the film is digital nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. No, the fucking the GFF president is like, wow, you know, this is a great fight. Obviously, both of the fighters are really good. One of them will get a contract with the GFF. The other can go fuck himself. I'm like, if they're both good fighters, why wouldn't it be in your best interest to sign both of them to contracts? Jeez, stinks. Yeah, stinks right. For the movie. right. So round three starts. And Chance is winning this round because, of course, Max, is, his cardio isn't good enough. He can't, cardio, he can't yeah, keep sure. going, yeah. you know. And ultimately, Chance chokes him out. Max taps and Chance wins. There's a lot more. Like, I'm skipping all the suspense. There's quite a bit of suspense. But ultimately, <laughs> Chance does win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chance, Chance actually gets on top, like, has the advantage, gets some punches in. And then he, like, just rolls over to his back. Like, it was, again, like a sex scene for no reason. Like, mm-hmm. He might as well get hit by a vase and be like, all right, I have to roll over now. <laughs> but then like from the bottom, he gets a choke around like guillotine choke and he wins. Yeah. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. So, yeah. And and Max is very upset. We watch him go through the various the stages of grief off to the side. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> we watch this actor try to be like sad. Two, three, four. Angry now, two, three, <laughs> four, murder! And he like flies across and knees Chance in the head when he's not looking after the, the whole fight's over. Okay, that's how silly this fucking movie is, right? So the idea is Chance wins, Max is very upset, and he hits him after the fight's over and causes the concussion. But they go with a flying knee. Like, mm-hmm. how, like you could not come up with a <laughs> sillier looking thing for him to do. He could just punch him. He might as well do like Raiden's thing from across. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so dumb. Chance might as well like be grateful for having win the match underneath Lucy's finger, right? While Charlie Brown backs <laughs> up. <laughs> I re- when he gets kneed in the head, I really wanted his coach to just stand in the center and be like, okay, technically none of my fighters have still gotten hurt during the match. My record stands. I just want to, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone's thinking of changing my record, this is not the match right now. This is just a guy. Right. Yes. And there's also this one moment, and this is like barely even worth pointing out, but there's also this one moment that I fucking love where it cuts over to Max's dad and mom and his dad like kind of like, you know, shakes his head as though he just realized that his son forgot to take out the trash again, you know? I mean, look, I, I can I say as a parent, I get it. If my toddler needs someone in the head and they began to convulse on the ground, I'd be like, well, <laughs> no. I mean, I don't think we need to do anything official, but we will be having strong words with him when he gets home. Yeah. I promise you all we are disappointed. So, buckles before murder. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So they rush Chance to the emergency room. We have a fucking shot of the full moon because it's always a full moon in movies. I don't understand that, but all movies take place during full fucking moons. Well, I mean, they can't transition shot away to a blank night sky. No, that would be crazy. It has to be a full moon. Or any other phase of the fucking moon. Yeah, right, right. But the family, like, paces nervously in the waiting room. There's this great moment where mom just becomes a fucking atheist for a minute. She renounces God to, and I say this as someone whose brand is getting people to renounce God too quick, <laughs> too quick. Give God a little bit to see. I mean, at least see if he walks out and he's like, yeah, no, it looked bad out there on the mat, but I'm actually fine. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she's mad right away and that's good. Like dad is giving a God speech and she's like, no, you fucking idiot. God either 
does not exist, or he let our son get murdered just now. Yep. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm going to start drinking. Yeah, and right. she becomes an alcoholic today, like yeah. this afternoon. Yeah, dad's like, God has a plan. And mom's like, fuck you, I'm listening to Gam. Right. <laughs> also, he responds to her giving up God by calling her a blasphemer. Yes. Which, you know, unless you're in a position to light someone literally on fire, I think that <laughs> word should just sort of be out of your lexicon. <laughs> So, so, but the doc comes in to give him the news, and this is great because they keep asking questions that they that the like doctor obviously can't answer. She's like, "He's in a coma," and they're like, "For how long?" <laughs> oh, for how long? Until he's not in a coma anymore. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing here? Twelve but hours. I will say, a twelve hour coma. So you're yeah, good. Now, be good. The doctor doesn't have all good answers though, because she does say at one point he suffered a stroke. Due to the head injury, and I was like, "Yeah, no, we figured it was the cause." <laughs> we solved that little mystery. Thanks, Ace Attorney. <laughs> they go, "Is he gonna live?" And she's like, "I don't. I, fuck off." And and when she doesn't answer, "Is he gonna live?" The mom says, "He's too young." And I wrote in my notes, "Okay, it's a knee to the head. It's not like he was walking through the grocery store and yeah. had a stroke. <laughs> he had a knee to the head. That's the difference maker." Yeah. And they're like, you know, well, can we go see him? And she's like, I, it doesn't literally does not fucking matter. Yeah, sure. Sure. We can go down to the salad bar in the cafeteria. Check out some of those vegetables, too, if you like. I mean, whatever you guys want to do. Go nuts. (laughs) I brought a hard boiled egg for lunch. You want to talk to this? (laughs) So they go, they go to check on Chance. He is in a coma, like the doctor said. Right. Dad says like, well, let's give Ashley a couple minutes alone with him in case she I don't know what's to fuck him. I don't I don't even know what unclear. Yeah. yeah. I felt like she wanted to do like a like a rubby thing, right? So we'll just step sure. outside. She wanted to like get in there. Sure. You can there's stuff you can yeah. do, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, they're like, we'll be right outside. So they head out the door and the trainer is there, right? And he's like, Yeah, probably shouldn't uh let chance fight. I for sure feel guilty and awful. Right, and he's definitely waiting for them to be yes. like, no, no, it's not your fault, but they do not do that. They do not. Well, they should not. They should be like, yep, you said nonsense about it being like no risk to do this, and it is your fault. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, dad makes him wait for it, but eventually dad not only exonerates him, but exonerates everyone, right? He's yeah, like, he says it's nobody's fault. Yeah. It's God's fault. Well, I feel like the courts might decide otherwise. Pretty sure the flying knee to the head is where the fault that lies, guy, everybody. The guy is- who owns that knee. Like, sure, God, maybe, but like that guy first. It's God's knee. If your Christian family didn't really follow along with Knives Out, though, maybe try this movie. This apparently is a mystery for Christians. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to Ashley crying over Chance. This is so funny because the, the writer is clearly like the movie wants an impactful dialogue from the wife here. The best that this fucking writer can come up with is, quote, I'm here, babe. Please come back to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally where my notes here are just and to X speed. Yes. <laughs> so, well, right. Because we get the dictionary defines coma. I don't know what to say to you. You're yeah. Just, sorry. Laying there. And then we, so then we get this like chance in a coma montage, right? Dad's reading him a Bible. No, we know dad's a serious Bible reader because he's got many highlights in multiple colors in his Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's reading from John 3, 16 is what we hear. But uh, somehow from the Old Testament part of the Bible is what he's flipped to. Yeah. No, it's a call forward. It's a straight, he swooshed a doodly doo to do it. (laughs) Yeah. And we watch Ashley. She's knitting. Because she's a godly woman and a cliche in every possible fucking way. And I have to point this out that early on, he is on oxygen. And they take him off oxygen during this montage because they need to tenderly shave him. But that means that it feels like earlier when he was on the oxygen, it was just like, we're just doing this for fun. He's actually fine. Yeah, actually, he's just... We were actually just trying to cover up that unsightly stubble I hope someone shaves soon. Hey, can I make a little shout out, a little wish here? If folks, if I'm ever in a coma, no need to shave me. I don't feel like we all need to go through that experience. You can just you can just let me take the door with a little bit of stubble. I'm okay with that. I'm going to do fun stuff with your beard if that happens. Oh, fuck Thank yeah. Thank you. Fuck all right, cool. Stuff. Nice. I, I, like not prank stuff, like interesting beard art. 
I think. Ooh, Interesting. Ooh, right. sure. Right. You know, everyone deals with pain of loss in their own <laughs> way, Heath. And if mm-hmm. giving me a Fu Manchu is the way that you well, deal with it, it then... It wouldn't be that because that's ridiculous. But yes, I would do hair okay. sculpting. No, it's going to yep. be something good. It's going to be something good. Mm-hmm. If it's bad, you're the next to have a coma, though. That's how it works. That's fair. <laughs> yep. That's the rule. I also like that in this montage, we also get like what chance is going through, right? We get his like coma memory dreams or whatever, where he's like walking through a fucking Ford commercial with his wife. Wait, it's montaging within a montage. Not allowed to montage within a montage. Yeah, come on. God damn it. Draw me a maze. Yeah, they prance through amber waves of grain together. But the now the montage eventually resolves on mom watching over him alone. And we see this is the first time we meet, I think, the star of the film, mom's enormous alcohol flask. <laughs> right, because she's supposed to be like sneaking a sip like, you know, like Heath does at a funeral. But the flask is weight. It's like the size of her fucking head. She might as well pull out a thermos of scotch and start sucking. Oh, like Heath does at a funeral. <laughs> right, Exactly. That's coffee. That's that's totally natural at that point. I thought the beer helmet you had at your dad's funeral was very tasteful, Heath. And I don't know why mm-hmm. Noah's lashing. Out. It was a scotch helmet. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but she starts giving him this big monologue about she's like, you remember the day you were born? It was only 34 minutes ago before the credits and stuff. And like why she named him Chance. And I love to, by the way, in the middle of this monologue, YouTube just cuts in with an ad like I'm listening to an episode of Dear Old Dads or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Noah, that's not fair. There was only one ad in this YouTube video. <laughs> Man, I didn't get any ads. That's bullshit. Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah, but she explains that, oh, God, there's always a chance because his name is Chance. She's explaining why she named him Chance. She says, because there's always a chance <laughs> if you have faith. Because Whoa, fighting chance. Chance the, would <laughs> the be entire a great movie. name for a movie about you if there ever was one. Yes. On. The entire movie was written around that piece of shit fucking line. Right. The <laughs> author of Snakes on a Plane is like... <sighs> Lazy. That's lazy. <laughs> this meth is great. <laughs> and, and then some significant time later, we've got Ashley sitting with him when he miraculously awakens. And she says, and I quote, you came back to me. I knew you'd come back. To OK, me. OK. In this moment, I was so fucking excited and then so disappointed. If the rest of the movie had started right now with him having a very silly aphasia voice from the stroke. <laughs> Best movie ever. Yes. Oh, no. What a comedy turn. Come on. I feel like they tried that and then they were like, no, no, we can't. No. Just, he no. was like, oh, shit. no. Okay. Yeah. We got it right away. Right away. It was bad. As we're about to learn, this actor can barely manage closed fist on chest. So yeah. I, if, if there was a draft with aphasia, it was by the wayside when they worked with this dude. <laughs> He wakes up from his coma, he turns to Ashley, he goes, what happened? And she's like, all right, so the good news is you won. (laughs) (laughs) But she tells him about the need of the head and he goes, I don't understand why. And we're like, yes, neither do any of us. The lack of proper character motivation is startling, isn't it? I mean, I understand why you're confused. He's got a... He's got a kneeable face, right? You got a man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he knows. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and he asks about the fetus because he's a good pre-dad, but that's when he realizes that his hand can't move and that he's paralyzed. Okay, but he does this thing. He doesn't play paralyzed. He plays rookie of the year. And I was like, oh my God, if this is a rookie of the year reboot, but with punching, I (laughs) am in. (laughs) If you don't know rookie of the year, yeah, you're eyes are clear and your back feels fine and I hate you just so you know <laughs> yeah obviously so so we we cut to the dot given mom and dad the bad news that he's partially paralyzed she starts off going like well he can speak because we tried the aphasia thing and that was very insensitive even by our <laughs> standards <laughs> Yeah, and they're like, well, tell us, is this permanent? And the doctor's like, Nyaw. yeah, she's like, pass, <laughs> pass, come back to me. Yeah, but they explain that he'll have to relearn to do stuff. And I love this moment because she's like, now, I don't think he'll ever fight again. And the movie plays this like, oh, no, how devastating. Like, but fucking, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Right. Like that was the first, like when you, when you, when you started convulsing on the ground, you're like, well, I guess he's got a career change coming up, right? 
You'd think, yeah, l- let me spoil this for you, podcast listener. The rest of the movie stakes will be, he must expose himself to this kind of neurological damage again. He just must. Yes, right. Even when he's unconscious and we have no indication that he would want to, right? But yeah, they say like, oh, he can't fight again. And the family's like, oh, he's going to be devastated. And I'm like, I feel like the GFF still has to give him the contract though, right? Like they said, the winner and he did win. And as I'm writing that in the notes, we cut to the GFF president guy calling the trainer and going, by the way, if he ever wakes up and, you know, is still punching shit, we, we've got that contract for him. I'm like, this- if this is like a rookie of the year scenario with punching, <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> great. So contract stands for the record. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, though, again, another alternate take. If he's just can't walk and half paralyzed, but still takes them up on the contract, just oh, sort of Jesus flops his Christ, way into the ring. Dude. Loser's purse is still a purse, everybody. <laughs> so now come no. here so I can tap you with the good arm. Come on. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> tap, tap. Nice. Half a million dollars. All right. <laughs> so then we cut over to dad giving Chance the news that he'll never fight again. You know, and I'm like, and he's all surprised. He's like, you got to be kidding. I'm like, I feel like I can't move my arm and I'm paralyzed on half of my body is a real clear. You're never going to fight indicator, right? Yeah. I wrote in my notes, dude, you can't move your arm. Maybe focus up. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I'd be stoked at this point if they were like, okay, you'll probably regain the ability to wipe your own ass. <laughs> right. Exactly. Jesus. And of course, he he has his like moment of doubt here, too. He's like, is this what I get for devoting my entire life to God? And dad says, and I quote, God has nothing to do with it. OK, I mean, correct. But you got lucky. <laughs> yes, right. Come on, like, man. That's you can't kind of a bullshit line for a preacher to bust. Out. That's our <laughs> line. Damn it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and to be clear, the movie is saying God's plan was to have this guy be very much disabled right before he becomes a dad. That's official. Yes. That's the plot. Right. right. But Chance pushes back. He's like, no, if if God cared, this wouldn't have happened. And I'm like, you're getting it. You're close. You're Come on, warm. Chance. You're almost, almost there, there, buddy. And then Ashley tries to take his hand to comfort him and he yells, don't, don't touch me. I've reached my acting limit. Everyone must leave now. <laughs> but just then, before everybody can leave the room, the trainer shows up and has this fantastic inability <laughs> To read the fucking oh my, room. This was almost my best worst. Okay. He walks in and he's like, hey, bud, what if we all make a fist and walk together? Oh, <laughs> shit. No. Sorry. Le- Le- he comes in and he's like, hey, champ, here's the fighting belt. Are you all ready to get out there and fight some more? Let's, have, let's get a little chant going. Fight, 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 <laughs> fight. No one's joining in. That's okay. I'll keep, sco- I'll keep going. Fight, fight, fight. You need a 12 count to get in? That's cool. I'll keep going. Fight, fight, fight. I'll do 12 <laughs> in a row and then you guys just join it. Like, honestly, it was so funny. <laughs> oh, rough. I see. I see what's happened. Again, I love that nobody's like, hey, man, you almost died in the ring. Do you even want to do this anymore? But no, he's like, no, you'll fight again. It'll be great. And then everybody's just like, it's not on the eight thing, right? <laughs> I love that he brings the belt in with him to like mm-hmm. <laughs> to every scene the trainer's in. Clearly feels like the actor owns that belt in real life and was like, I will need that belt within my vision at all times yes. <laughs> while it's on set. The best part is when he was like in a coma and the trainer's waiting with him. He's got the belt over his shoulder the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) So he just carries that with him constantly. Uh, Heavy. It kind of gets hot in my car because it's metal, (laughs) mostly. So, yeah. So they leave the room. Mom wanders off to hit her flask a couple of times. Dad catches her drinking this time. Mm -hmm. Right. And it gets all preachy because he's a preacher. He goes, alcohol is not the answer. Hey, uh, first of all, fuck you. Mm-hmm. And also pretty sure it is right there. <laughs> At Absolutely, this moment, yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, yes. honestly, yeah. Unless you have like neurosurgery experience. Yeah, have a little drink. Have a little nip, mom. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I feel like I feel like this is exactly one of those times where alcohol actually is the answer. And then and of course, mom has to say like, you know, why is God punishing us? And and I'm like, you know, see, that's another great example of the harm of believing in God. Great job. Christian fucking movie. Yeah. Christian movie. Yeah. Right. She's like, oh, we obviously did something horribly wrong and evil and God is punishing us. And I was like, well, the horribly wrong part. Yeah. But again, like you're you jumped you jumped way ahead. It's not. Yeah. No. Bad belief. <laughs> so while they're doing that, the trainer is talking to Ashley 
And he's doing the like, oh, wow, I guess it's all my fault that he's very upset again. <laughs> How would anybody like to? Yeah, he says, <laughs> I brought up fighting again too soon. And I wrote in my notes. Yeah, man, it's the first thing you said. You didn't even say you're awake. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Well, and then, and as as if it wasn't insensitive enough, the trainer then shares the story that he actually had a heart attack in the ring and couldn't fight anymore because of it. Like when he, back when he was a fighter, and it's like, okay, so this exact same thing happened to you, and you still didn't think, hey, I should slow roll the fight chant, right? <laughs> it does explain why he mentioned earlier in the movie how good Chance's cardio is, though. Now we know it's part of <laughs> right, his backstory. Yeah, yeah, he was really worried about that. Also, I know this is just a tiny quibble to have with the movie. But this actor, he does the this close gesture, but it's too far apart. Yes. He does like, he's like, I was this, but it's like a meaty this close. Like he, he had realistic expectations. He's like, no, I mean, I wasn't in the major league. I, I, no, he was like four and a half 50. inches. I was this close. <laughs> okay. I'm going to nominate this guy for best worst gesturing because he earlier tried to do a fist pump to be like, yes, and he missed. Yes. I don't know what that even means, but he did that. He missed at the very end of a seed when Dana White, the guy called him to be like, yeah, you still have the UFC contract. <laughs> he's supposed to do a fist pump. And he's like, hmm. And they, they, it was wrong. And they I, I honestly, dude, I obsessed over that scene. I watched it a couple of times because he so clearly misses the fist pump. And I think what it is is that they were in a tiny room and they couldn't back the camera up enough to where you could see the whole fist pump. So he tried to do a fist pump <laughs> like stationary. I don't know. Yeah, it was it was pretty incredible. But the most incredible thing is the end of this fucking scene where, where he's like, uh, you know, I guess I've been living vicariously through chance. I should just let it go. He'll never fight again. I should just accept that. And the wife is like, no, he will fight again. What? <laughs> Ashley, come on. Your character's very inconsistent, Ashley. Uh, right? Just, it's went so badly. Maybe there's like a life insurance policy, but not a disability policy. You oh, know what Jesus I'm saying? She, she's like, hey, so I was looking up the bills for, you know, railings and shit, and he needs to fight. Can he fight right now? Hey, you <laughs> fight him. Ding, ding. <laughs> Pulls a little bell out of her purse. Ding, ding. <laughs> come on. Were you not listening to the story? The trainer was like, yeah, I had a heart attack in the ring. I started drinking. I had I hit rock bottom. Then I started coaching. And now the guy I'm coaching, basically the same thing. I mean, he has a stroke and he's going to be all depressed. He hit rock bottom. We're, the movie's turning into a fractal. Somebody needs to stop the terrifying thing. Yes. Cut it there. And Ashley's like, no, no, I feel like this cycle of violence should continue. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're 46 minutes into a 75-minute movie, and we finally found a plot, so we're going to take a quick break to celebrate. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will God miraculously heal Chance? Will God give him the motivation and determination to heal himself? Will God sit this one out entirely and leave it to his physical therapist? Find out the answers to these questions and almost nothing else at all when we return for the eventless conclusion of Fighting Chance. Hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Heath Enright. Football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. Who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet $5 on football and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. And to ensure nobody on our show misses out on the action, we've brought on our very own Eli Bosnick to give us a few tips and tricks. That's right, Noah. I'm ready to sports. All right, Eli. Well, what do you think about the Lions' chances next week after that shocking upset against the Chiefs? A <laughs> great question, Noah. For me, it's going to depend on who has angels in the outfield. No, Big no, time. Wrong sport. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use the code GAM to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code GAM. The crown is yours. 
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. All right. Well, so who do you have on Monday night? Mm, does either team have a loophole dog? Uh, no, they do not. Mm, then I do not know. Fair. Man, I really wish one of the teams had a loophole dog. Me too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It's a fantastic night for a fight, Chet. It sure is, Ralph. Now, tonight is the very first fight for podcaster Heath Enright. That's true, it is. And I heard he refused to train at all for this fight. That's right. Apparently, he told his coach and trainers he, quote, figured it out. All right. Well, we'll see if that's the case, because here's the bell. All right. Swenson comes out with a strong couple of jabs. And what? Oh, what's this? Enright has stopped the fight. Yes, he has. It appears that he's telling the ref that the two jabs from Swanson count as tapping out. Now, that's what I call lateral thinking. Indeed. It appears he had a copy of the UFC guidelines hidden in his shorts there, Frank, and he's uh, he's pointing to a highlighted portion now. Yeah, it doesn't look like the ref is going to go for it, though, and there's the bell again. Okay. Now, now it appears Heath Enright is grappling his opponent and... Yep, he is tapping out for his opponent. Yep, he's making yep, his opponent tap out. His hand, that that can't be in the rules. Okay, now he's tapping out constantly while still continuing to fight his opponent. A loophole if ever I've seen one. And now he's changed his name to his opponents, which means that no matter what, he technically wins the fight. He brought a lot of paperwork into the ring tonight. And a notary, Ralph. And a notary. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin Chance alone in the hospital room, trying to pick up his great big championship belt. Yeah. I feel like they could have just got him a reasonably sized belt there. Yeah. It feels like a weird prop to make him do tragedy with, right? Like yeah. they might as well give him like my son's stacking rings. Like he must dramatically put red, orange, yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't. If only I could get this rubber chicken. Yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't have the gravitas <laughs> they were hoping for. Yeah. He, he turns to God and he goes, I'll never forgive you for this, God. And I'm like, I don't believe you. I feel like in another 20 minutes or so. I don't believe you. I think that uh, you'll get better and then you'll give him all the credit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> instead of your doctors and physical therapists. Right. Your doctor yeah. instead yeah. of the nice people who the actually PT, help you. Yeah. And so we then we cut to mom and dad and Ashley. They're out in the hall and... Ashley goes to sit down and mom turns to her because they need a way to get into this dialogue. It's so stupid. She sits down and mom goes, what's wrong? <laughs> I just feel like Firefly had a third and fourth season. And I just, I, oh man. Why Every time I think so about it, it makes me so mad. So many seasons of Big Bang Theory and Firefly just got the one or two, depending she, on how you count it. Because, you know, the two seasons are basically one. So. Stupid Fox and their mid-turn, mid-season schedule. Like, <laughs> so yeah but she's like well you know the bills are adding up and it's getting a little tough i might have to cancel my pregnancy or whatever christian healthcare ministry fucked us we're not getting yeah. really <laughs> didn't come through on this yeah turns Should've out got real insurance or lived God. in a better country real bummer so <laughs> So, but then the mom and dad are like, don't worry we'll give you the money that you need we've got some saved up you'll never see a bill and i'm like why include that conflict if you're going to deflate it with the next line? Not just with the next line, but then they'll double deflate right. it a scene later. Yep. Like it's yes. it's like the people who wrote this movie were allergic to any stakes other than I got need in the head. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then we cut back into the hospital room for Eli's best worst. Okay. Look, I said this at the beginning. We're sensitive. We're good people. 
Two thirds of us are good people. But the fact that this scene is supposed to be tragic is complicated by a lot of things. First of all, he decides to cut the wrist that is in the rookie of the year fist. Mm -hmm. So we literally have like a boiling where he's like trying to push it away so he can cut it and it keeps smacking back into his chest moment. (laughs) But they also jock jam Christian Rock the entire time in the foreground, right? So even if I was going to be affected by this performance, the entire time it's like, oh, Jesus, I'm inside your earbud. Jesus is right here. Yeah. No, and also, like, I mean, it's good. Like, like I sympathize with him, right? Because I kind of felt the same way. I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing I don't have a razor blade as I listen to this music as well. But yeah. <laughs> right. And also, like, come on, this dad was shaving him with a fucking straight razor and left it sitting next to his bed. Like, come on, that's on dad at least a bit. Yeah, isn't no, it? for real. Relax, Sweeney Todd. Maybe get your dad a maybe get your son a fucking Gillette. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like coma seems like a uh like an electric razor scenario if you're gonna right, be right, shaving, doesn't right? It? Exactly. it seems like you would want to also it's, it's just a tiny note but it's so funny because dad was actually shaving him with like a safety razor and it's the razor blade from inside the safety razor so you know there was a scene where they were like great so this is where you remove the safety razor from where you remove <laughs> right, the blade yeah. from this and he was like i can't i'm already so bad at this level of pantomime you guys have got to knock the blade out of the <laughs> razor it's- Right. It'll be easier if I just fall onto the floor and it falls and bounces out and then there's a loose razor blade. Yeah. Right. And yes. then Clippy the paper clip appears above it and it's like, looks like you're trying to kill yourself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he's like, he's like trying to, he can't talk himself into doing it. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, honestly, like if he goes ahead and, and slits his wrist at this point, that would explain why this movie is so short when the plot just started. But no, <laughs> ultimately he doesn't. And he looks over and Clippy has the format for a suicide note. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that was interesting. interesting. Yeah. That was useful. Everyone made fun of me, but then AI showed up and they were like, oh, we love it. It's so cool. That's what I was, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> So and so then we cut back to mom, dad, and Ashley in the hallway. Ashley needs to go home, so she's about to leave. But damn it, if Max doesn't show up, the guy who need him in the head. That is, I, I'm just assuming that the listeners have already forgotten this absolutely forgettable character. But but he shows up, the author of this tour de force. In case anyone forgot, yeah, right, right. Max is here instead of in jail. For the attempted murder, which is weird. Right. Uh, Don't worry, Heath. That's going to be normal, cool, chill explained at the end. They're going to try to explain it in a second, but they won't. Yeah. So, yeah. So so he comes up to family's home, mad, and he's like, can I can I see chance? And they're like, yes, we're not going to ask his permission or warn him or anything. He just screamily asked us all to leave the room. And but I think I think he'll be OK seeing you, the man who nearly murdered him. Yes. The person he needs right now to talk to is you, Max. You're the best person to speak to him right now. But the, we have one request. Please go in there alone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so he walks in, of course, fucking Chance is sitting on the floor, weeping openly with a razor blade in his hand. And Max is like. I feel like, are you okay is a weird thing to say now. But, hey, um, buddy. <laughs> you on the floor so. with a razor blade? <laughs> so. You can tell that he kind of ruined Max's apology, right? Because Max is all psyched up for like a one man. To, and he's like, oh, you're trying to kill yourself over what I did. Um... Uh, sorry, this, yeah, the, the vibes are where I was sort of expecting you to be sort of like regally and gently sitting in the bed. Did you ask you're, Clippy for what I should say? This is awkward. <laughs> you're kind of, do I lift? I feel like it's weird for me to lift. Also, you got one good hand and a razor blade. So I'm worried you're going to slash at me. I just, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll take a knee. I'll take a knee and we'll just, why don't I do like a sleepover pose? Like hands on the chin. Yeah. And we can just talk on the ground, feet up down here, down here. So, yeah, and it, so he starts talking to him. He's like, you know, I'm really sorry for what I did. I have no excuse or even plausible motivation for it. He says, I am going to be doing some jail time. So, you know, at least the movie recognizes that. Cool. Yeah, no, he's going to cool. get jail time. He, he's got a couple of months to hang out first before his jail time that he's definitely going to get, though. Well, thank you, Heath, because this is when he says he's been on the run fleeing the police but he's going to turn himself in now. So to be clear, what this movie wants us to believe narratively is he flying need that guy in the head and he was like, well, 
I'll be in my locker room. And then they, he just left. He yeah, just, he just, just left fucking the Bruce Willis his way out the goddamn window. Yeah, and he uh-huh. showered right, and then <laughs> shaved and fucking and has been on the run for the month long coma. He's on the lamb right now. Yes, he says I've been on oh, the run. I didn't catch that line. Okay, that actually is what the movie's saying. Yes. So he knows he's going to go to jail, <laughs> but he's been like hiding out, laying low. Now he's decided to apologize, and then he's going to turn himself in? He's apparently been waiting the entire coma, and then he's going to turn himself in. He decided to wait out a coma. Oh, because he knew it was a one-month coma. He probably asked the doctor. Oh, right. Or right, he's been go. like dressing up as a janitor, like Giuseppe the janitor no one recognizes. Hey, uh, that reminds me. It's me, Giuseppe. <laughs> Any news on that the chance guy? Because, uh, you know, they... They do extend your sentence the longer you're on the <laughs> lamb. And, um, I was uh, kind of hoping to make a bail, but doesn't look like that's going to happen now. Maybe someone so, could uh, give him a poke or something. So he's like, but don't kill yourself. You have too much to live for. You're an ins- inspiration to me and blah, blah, blah. And then he leaves. Max leaves with the razor blade still sitting next to the suicidal guy. I'll let you get back to Well, he he also says, I'm going to cover your hospital stay and your physical yes. therapy. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's why he leaves the razor blade. He's like, uh, and that's going to be very expensive. So if you would like to oh, save no. me those costs. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. You know what I'm saying? I kind of need it for legal bills these days. <laughs> I assaulted you. Uh, Almost did that. Fun. I'm Giuseppe the janitor. Have you met me? I was uh, earlier. <laughs> like, this Been here for like a month and a half. Mustache. He says it like he's offering something too. He's like, um, I got the medical bills. And it's like, yeah, man, you got the medical bills. I know. You do. Yeah, no. Like the court was the- going to order you to do that <laughs> anyway, but thank you. Do, do, so. do you also agree to go to jail? Okay, cool. Because right. you're going to jail. <laughs> Yeah, so he goes outside. Dad thanks him for courageously saying that he was sorry. And then as he goes out, he's like, oh, and also, like, you guys um, probably want to check on him pretty immediately because <laughs> he had a razor blade. Oh, he's in there with a razor him. blade. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, I shouldn't have asked you for those very explicit directions to the popcorn factories uh, before I told you this. But, yeah, your son's in there trying to kill himself with a razor blade. <laughs> The loose razor blade that you left next to him when he was sad. Yeah, right, right. So mom and Ashley go in to check on him. They leave mom alone and she pulls out her flask, but she doesn't drink the alcohol. She doesn't need it anymore. I love that she doesn't like dump it out, right? Like, because usually in the movie, that's the thing is that, oh, dump that into this sink or whatever. I don't need that. She's just like, no, I will save that for later. Well, no, she's just responsibly tapering down. She'll have, you know, a little bit less today and then maybe some... You know, later that day. But uh, it's not clear. It's not clear. There you go. So it's a, it's a process. One so, at a time. So dad goes in to check on Chance and he's like, you, do you want me to pick you up and put you back on the bed? He's like, yeah, I guess I probably did. I can't do that on my own. This is where he says, I'm not even a man anymore, Chance says, because of the stroke, I guess. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I thought maybe he had landed on the razor blade when he fell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or maybe like the fist, he was like, yeah, going southpaw is tough when you're trying oh. to, you know, by yourself. <laughs> uh, gonna have to learn that. He goes, Dad, what am I gonna do? And I'm like, well, not much, because there's only 15 minutes left in this movie, including fucking credits, I think. Yeah, whatever you're gonna do, do it fast, kiddo. <laughs> yeah. But Dad's like, no, you know what? No matter what you do, I'm proud of you. And, and that's the fucking message of the scene. And it's stupid. He tells him he has a heart of gold. I wrote in my notes, you have a heart of gold in the eye of the tire. I'm not super <laughs> great at this, am I? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're, okay, guys, be honest. I've never asked you for anything as much as I'm asking you now to be vulnerable and open when I ask you. At the end of this scene, there's a little pause and those actors wonder if they should kiss, right? For sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. 100%. You guys saw it as well. Okay, thank no, you. That's no, all I, okay. I feel like they yep. saw the nope. lean start happen. They're like, cut, cut, cut. cut. No, 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 cut. no, no, no yes, sorry. Yes, We're yes, my, yes, my father and son. Father sorry, son. sorry. I just gently set him in the bed just now. So. <laughs> it was confusing. Southpaw's hard. <laughs> We're not used to acting in non- I was trying to help out. Gay porn. <laughs> Dads make sacrifices for their sons. It's parenting. It's not whatever. <laughs> now we get- Chance meeting his physical therapist and and everyone's there, by the way, but nobody in this fucking family has a job. They can just be there for every fucking scene. So when he meets his physical therapist, it's with Ashley and his parents. <laughs> the physical therapist is like, oh, so 
you're all just always here, I guess. That's what that's weird. Okay, time for chance yeah. to do a fucking knee bend. I don't know why you're all gonna watch. You're all gonna watch. I guess yeah, we're all watching this. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, it would. And then and then we fucking yada 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 the entire plot of the movie. Yeah, I mean, look. I was grateful because I've seen 97 getting better from the thing Christian movie. So mm -hmm. I was like, nice. Yeah, no, get along. Times two X. <laughs> I, the only thing for this montage that I really want to mention is there is an attempt at a very dramatic moment where he's trying to use his paralyzed arm to hug his wife. And she grabs his hand very tenderly and puts it over her as though like this moment of connection. However, he's committing way too hard to the I'm paralyzed pantomime. So it looks like he's desperately trying to grab his wife's boob and she's <laughs> stopping him because she has super strength. <laughs> Right. You know the scene where the superhero grabs the bad guy's wrists and twists it and the guy's like, you ain't human, man. You ain't human. That's what's happening. But it's a love scene in the, in the middle of a montage. That's what we're watching. <laughs> Do you think maybe the movie was willing to show the strokey sex with the aphasia for a second? And then they were like, no, we have to cut all that. But they left this by accident. Possible. I, I I don't think so, Heath, but I'm glad that you brought it up. Just come on. <laughs> Why would you not show I us that? I think so. I support you, Heath. Cowards. Thank you. Not a baby. I want to see strokey <laughs> sex with a face. Everybody want. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. And then, so I, I'm not saying I didn't want it. I just didn't think It's the it. woke yeah. mob. And you know what? Now the <laughs> podcasts are brave Thank enough you. to say it. The woke mob <laughs> are keeping the strokey aphasia sex out of our <laughs> Christian films. <laughs> we have weird jobs. What can we enjoy? <laughs> yeah so we watched the um we watched the physical therapy some more because this movie has absolutely nothing right like the montage ends and they're like oh you guys want to do another montage about the same thing yep. they're like just a little just a little bit yeah i gotta say the, the the song for the montage for me was super funny at double speed which i was at this point <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. The music got way better if you do that. It was so fun. Yeah. It's good. And then there's also there's this great moment where, like, apparently the writer remembers that that Chance gave Ashley the necklace, you know, at the very beginning of the movie. And so now we have the dramatic moment where she says, I have a gift for you. And she gives him back his own necklace. <laughs> Which is, you know, for the movie, it makes sense or whatever. But like in real life, that's a shit gift, right? Like yeah. that belongs to him. And also like as a Christian, wouldn't you have put that on his neck like while he was in a coma fighting for his life and needed the that's grace of God to save yet. him? Yeah. yeah. Right? She was withholding it the whole time, like a like yeah. a 30 day chip or something. Maybe she was <laughs> just like, it'll be more dramatic if I do this. Right. Later. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But she's proud of him for for not giving up and everything. They have, they have that whole big fucking scene. And then he explains that he's thinking about fighting again. Right. And she's like, well, yeah, no, we all assumed actually this. We made an entire made it the entire fucking plot. Right. Yeah. He says, now, you know, I could go back to preaching again. And she's like, no, no. In, th in fighting, at least the, the people whose brains you hurt volunteer for it right they know yeah, what they're no, getting into better. so yeah. interesting that he's like sorry i can't do a job with skills anymore but i do preaching I've, I've got preaching. Requires literally nothing. Yeah. the ultimate safety school job yeah it's either preaching or i go to eli and heath's middle school once a year and freak out all the kids about drunk driving oh, yeah. and as an adult you think about that speaker and you're like what the fuck was the point of that yeah. that doesn't seem it was real bad for me bad for him it's <laughs> the wife she was like no, you should go back to the job with the extreme brain damage. I, I think she's right. I think she's right. Yes. I was excited at this point. I thought maybe he would like go back to fighting and be like all strokey as a style Thank you. and be amazing, yes. like Voldo or something like that. Yes, drunken okay. kung fu. So good. Right. That would have been like my favorite movie. Drunken kung fu. Jesus Christ. We, we make such better movies just with our suppositions, Heath. Why don't they hire us? <laughs> And so, of course, all of this culminates on the big scene where everybody's gathered around and he's going to walk without his crutches for the first time. And rather than, like, not make a big deal out of it and present it as just another step in the process, everyone's gathered around and they all give speeches about how excited they are for him to succeed at this thing he hasn't tried yet, you know? 
Yeah, do they do that like every time they attempt this and he fails and they're like, all right, same time tomorrow, everybody. Sorry, we're actually... <laughs> <laughs> Once we reach the dramatic walking part of physical therapy, we actually don't do it with you anymore. We just do big crescendo music. You can hear the music in the background. Yeah. We just do these big crescendo moments. And then if you fail, we have to gather everyone up tomorrow. So this orchestra costs a lot to rent. If you could, yeah. if you could nail it on one, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he like he gives everybody a very like end of the movie. Thank you speech in advance. And then he wobbles dramatically to Ashley. Dad's like, yeah, hooray, great walking. Whatever. And then, of course, he he collapses into her arms and everything because, you know, pregnant women can hold unlimited amounts of sudden <laughs> amounts weight. Of, actually good amounts of them. MMA fighters. Oh, I wanted her to go into labor and turn around and she doesn't catch him and he just falls. <laughs> <laughs> He hits his head on the way down, goes into a different yeah. coma. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> now the other side's paralyzed. Why would we put that Fine. stool there? Come on. It's the worst. Max comes in with a flying <laughs> <laughs> Max catches him with an uppercut on the way down. Got it! <laughs> I remembered why I did the knee thing. Fuck yep. you. You suck. So, so then we cut to six months later. Right. The fucking movie is over. Apparently it's done its job. Yeah. He's holding the baby now. Also, the movie forgot that it's supposed to be about God. He just recovered because of PT and they showed us that. And that was it. Right. They just forgot. Right. There was the, there was no moment even where he like redoubled his commitment to Christ. Or anything. We never even saw him read a fucking Bible. Mm -mm. Nope, just he was exposed he to Christianity on the physical way. Physical therapy. I think Noah's more exposed to Christianity on his drive to the grocery store than yes. this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> I only passed three church breed awards. Yeah, no, I don't even think he ever like flashed back to earlier in the movie. This Christian movie is technically still going, I think. Yeah, right? but technically. The fat yeah. lady has not sung. So yeah, but so it's six months later, he's got a baby now um, and he's fine. Yeah, and look, I know I should check my cute baby privilege because I had the cutest baby and continue to have the cutest baby, but they did not get a cute baby for this movie. <laughs> you know that someone at their church was like, y'all can use Stephanie. And they were like, ah. <laughs> we do yep. need someone. Jerky yes. Man. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does she have a little bow uh, or mm. maybe a <laughs> mask? <laughs> <laughs> making fun of babies makes you happy Eli we'll keep it <laughs> so he's like yeah I'm gonna go off uh, on a quick jog and she's like yeah cause you have no lingering effects from that uh, coma at all he's like sure don't all good yeah 100% and then he runs off now that should be the end of the fucking movie Right. But no, we watch him jog for like a minute and a half. And then he shows up at the boxing gym and the trainer's there to train him. And he's still going to get that contract after all. Right. We, we, we go through an additional like 90 seconds of speed close. Mm -hmm. And they actually end a fighting movie without a fight. I was like, this is th yes. the balls on a Christian movie to be like, nope, that's it. It's just done now. Right. That's it. No fight. The whole plot of the movie is he will fight again, and the movie doesn't end with him fighting again. It's so goddamn stupid. It's so stupid, in fact, that the closing line of the movie, this movie's final sentiment, is Chance saying, and I quote, there's still some good in this crazy world after all. <laughs> okay. I have a theory. Do you think maybe... One or both of them actually hurt themselves trying to do their stupid MMA scene. So they just had to Ooh, stop. And they had yeah. to like slightly oh, rewrite the movie to not even have a little bit of end fight. <laughs> I, I honestly think that the movie ran out of money. I, I think that they had a much bigger close in mind. But after they like filmed that first big MMA fight, which was the first half of the fucking movie, they were like, wow, we can't afford to do that twice. Okay, right. what if we only invited nine people for the crowd shots? No, no, we still, still, <laughs> still ran out of money. All right, but that's it. That's the end. And I guess that's going to do it for our review of Fighting Chance. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to trick ourselves into coming back next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. 
17-year-old Sayako aspires to become a journalist, just like Kanimoto, an elite newspaper writer she looks up to. But Kanimoto, shamed from an erroneous report about a corruption scandal, jumps in front of a train and commits suicide. Since that incident, Sayako suddenly becomes able to see spirits and almost loses her life. However, from the near-fatal incident, she experiences something extraordinary. The journalist inside her stirred. She embarks to find out about the truth. But the forces that stand in her way turn out to be far more formidable than she ever imagined. What? We'll be watching The Rebirth of Buddha. Happy science, Oh, that's baby. gotta be happy science. Oh, okay. happy okay. science. Okay. Jesus, I, the whole time I'm like, why are we watching? And then to the last three words, you finally lay it on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm excited. You just thought I was like having a psychotic break. Yeah, right, right. Or he just chose some movie about a suicide and a ghost or something. Did but you just no, get okay. flying need in the head, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I did. By Max, of all things. Yeah, oh, no, it's all go. working out. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 421 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation, Need a D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Address on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used for permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Max and his entire family went bankrupt because big farm money is nothing and medical bills are enormous. Yep. Chance and Ashley's kid went on to post a 14 2 and one record in baby MMA, which is as brutal as it is adorable. Chance instantly died the first time he got tapped in the head again. Yeah. His coach was heard to say, whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs>don't know if you know that if you are familiar with our a little note body me. of work here. <laughs> Sorry. What would the dog be? What would his position be in your mind, Heath? The loophole uh, dog? Yeah, right. Like if, the, if, 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 if there was no rule that said that a dog couldn't play football, what would he? Because he can't play quarterback, right? That would make sense. He doesn't have thumbs. Right? Yeah. I feel like corner. Raw hide receiver. That's what? <laughs> oh, because. <laughs> wait, What? <laughs> I, my how nose is bleeding from how hard I tried just now to make a dog. Like Rawhide is the thing dogs eat and wide uh, receiver is the position in football. See, and dogs I sometimes it. have a bone that has that word. I was in just it, trying so to get you. rawhide from dog. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's thank it's you. a it's pretty stretchy. I feel like a dog I feel like a dog could play corner though, right? Like like a, a dog who loves frisbee or whatever could just Oh yeah, a dog could maybe D up safety. I could see yeah, a dog yeah. playing safety. Right, right, yeah, exactly. So defensive secondary, basically. Yeah. Yeah. They'd have to like see, or know, see, a pass, see a pass coming, leap up and, and swat it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they wouldn't get a lot of they, you wouldn't see a lot of pick sixes. Maybe with the teeth, they could grab one here and there. Like yeah, but, if there's like a small Nerf ball, you know, maybe something like that, or yeah, had like Velcro to stick to fur. A big enough dog, I think, could play linebacker. Right? Yeah, dogs, could, yeah I, I had a, they can get my, through. My childhood dog Rusty, the golden retriever, would actually play like tackle football with us wide if, retriever yeah, nice. that's there you go, go. Yeah, yes. wide retriever yeah. there you go that's yeah, worth the nosebleed eli that was i worth almost the died <laughs> i almost died <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2023 all rights reserved